everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Today, we're gonna to take a look at an all new Crosley C100 BT. In fact, it hasn't even come out yet. It comes out this week. And let me tell you what, this is a very interesting idea from a strategy perspective that Crosley is doing. They've added Bluetooth out to the venerable C100, which has proven to be a fantastic turntable in the past. So I'm curious how this one stacks up. Plus, we've got a little surprise unboxing after the main review. We're gonna look at some new Beatles-themed and non-Beatles-themed record crates because my plastic tubs have gotten so warped and damaged that I really need to upgrade them to something a little bit more substantial. So we got a two for one today. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Welcome to Wreckitology. Okay, and here it is. This is the all new Crosley C100 BT, which of course stands for Bluetooth. I had the original C100 for a long time. I also had the C200, both of them fantastic, fantastic turntables. You know, this is really well suited for somebody that's just coming out of having a suitcase player or an all-in-one and sort of has had a taste for things and is like, okay, I really wanna get serious about this now and focus on sound quality and features over just the design aesthetic. If that's you, great, pay attention. This may be a great next step for you. If not, then that's okay too. But for a lot of folks, this is sort of a next step. This is very similar to an Audio-Technica LP120 and I think it's a really good thing because Crosley's price point is in the low 200s on this unit versus the Audio-Technica, which is the high 200s-ish. And um, so, you know, take it for what it is. It is very similar. This is only a two-speed turntable, although it does have Bluetooth, whereas the Audio-Technica is three speeds. And my message to Crosley, if you're watching, is add the third speed. That would be great. I would love that capability. I think that's really, really good. But as you will see, we got a lot of great features in here. And um, rumor on the street is they come out of the same factory anyway. So if you like one, you should like both. And uh, this might be a great fit. So let's go ahead and unbox this. I am excited to see what improvements have been made. This uh, has been about three years since I've had my C100 so I'm excited to see kind of the next step of the process. So what do we have here? This catches my eye. This is like a 100th anniversary. That's cool. Is that like a cleaning cloth? Let's see. Let us find out. Looks like a cleaning cloth, but you can never have too many of these. Or is this a case? What is it gonna be a case to? No, it's gotta be a cleaning cloth. Okay, must be a big case. Um, yeah, no, this is awesome. This is really cool and it's nice and big. A lot of times they give you a cleaning cloth that's like, you know, this big, the size of one of these little squares here, but this is nice. I like that, that's cool. I love that, that's really, really, really cool. And for those of you that always like to say things like, the Crosley of today is nothing like the original Crosley. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. It's just not the case. Crosley is pretty much, not single-handedly, but by the way, there's the RCA with grounded, um, the grounded cable on there as well. Um, one of the major players in the reason of this whole vinyl revival that now means we can go to our corner store, you know, whether it be a Kohl's, a Walmart, a Target, and buy a brand new record, which you know, you have these guys to thank for it. So this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be really cool. But let's finish unboxing it here. And yeah, I'm gonna have to lay this down flat. For those of you that have been around for a while, you know that I notoriously open these things upside down. I'm gonna really try not to do that this time. Slide it out like this so far. Everything well packaged. All right, nothing else in the box. All right, on top here we've got the platter mat, which 
which is going to be a felt platter mat. Felt is sort of the default. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. And this will get you started. This is what's, what the record sets on. So it can be called a slip mat, a platter mat, pretty much the same thing. Although when you talk about slip mats, a lot of times that allows DJs to do their scratching work. This is not a DJ turntable because it's belt driven. The C200, you could do, you could do DJ work with. But this is uh, purely belt driven for listening only. And a felt mat is a good starting point. And you know, you can upgrade to leather, to acrylic, which is what I like, other materials, and cork is another popular one, but this this will get you started. Branded as Crosley. This is just like I remember the original C100 having. So I'm gonna sort of accumulate the packing materials. Dust cover here. So our dust cover is, I'm guessing that's a polycarbonate, similar to like what a CD is made out of. It's a rigid, brittle plastic. They tint theirs blue, which I think is really cool. So it's got sort of this purplish, bluish tint to it. Otherwise, it's pretty clear. I also like uh, dust covers that are smoked, like a darker color, which I think is awesome. Um, one thing I will tell you about this is th this material is very susceptible to scratching. And you may say, oh, no problem, that's not going to happen. But even putting a, C uh, uh, I keep saying CD. What is it with CDs? It's because we did the live giveaway. By the way, if you joined us for our live yesterday, thank you very much. We gave away a bunch of CDs to folks. So if you missed that live, hit the bell notification and be a part of it next time. Anyway, if you put like a record on here or anything, over time, it'll, you'll start seeing these uh, marks because it scratches so easily. Because this is highly reflective, it's not very conducive to filming. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. I'll probably get another shot of it once we get the whole thing put together. But I really wanna focus on the rest of this stuff. And I'll show you how to set it up as well. Give you my thoughts sort of as we go through the entire thing. Also, I wanna say, that how much I appreciate you guys. We've really built, uh, and I say we, you and me, we've built a very inclusive, safe, friendly community of people here. And you know, it's amazing how, when you do anything creative, my wife and I were talking about this earlier, when you do anything creative, whether it's writing, whether it's videos, whether whatever it is, singing, there will be nasty people out there, regardless of the quality of what you're doing, there will be nasty people out there ready to give their two cents and to detract and to bring people down and to hurt. And it's just, it's nonsense. Be nice out there, be nice to people. I know it's easy when you're watching a video, there's no responsibility. You know, they're not gonna find out who you are. They're always gonna come after you kind of thing. So people, I think, use that as a false sense of security. They're like, well, I can just, you know, whatever. And I think a lot of times out of jealousy or just spite, they will, you know, just say something nasty. It's bullying behavior. Bullying behavior, you guys. Nobody needs it. And if, you know, if you feel the tendency to want to say something that's, you know, nasty. And I'm not talking about necessarily on my videos. Just in general. Don't say it. If you've got nothing nice to say, don't say it. There's no point in doing so. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to flip this over because I forgot about this guy right here. This would be the platter platter itself. I think this is an aluminum platter. So this is going to be typical for what other companies are producing for platter mats on these type of turntables. By the way, this is a fully manual turntable. There's no automatic functions. I always get people on here that's like, well, it doesn't even auto return. It's worthless. It's like, no, it's completely not worthless. You're just looking for the wrong product. So, so much misinformation. Most of people's frustrations on stuff, by the way, this is really loud, sorry. Most of people's frustrations on stuff, turntables specifically, is out of a place, they're speaking from a place of just not exactly knowing the scope of what it was intended to do. Most notably, the people that you know, when we're reviewing a novelty or entry-level record player, I'll be like, well, that's nothing like my Technics 1200. It's a $30 record player in the case of a suitcase player. What do you expect? You know what I mean? Here's a platter, by the way. Sorry, I'm on my soapbox today. There are the platter strobe markings. I'll show you about that later. This is a belt-driven turntable. So the sub platter, you'll notice that belt is around the sub platter and this opening here. 
with this ribbon allows you to easily place the belt over the motor pulley and there's a hole on opposing sides both for the uh, belt and for these finger leverage points i wouldn't call them grips but leverage points here the reason why they're duplicated is so that everything stays nice and balanced so we'll set that aside for now this is important because and it is pretty heavy, even though it's aluminum. I always think these are made of steel because they feel heavy enough to be steel. This is important because with a heavy platter, you have mass inertia. That's a big advantage over suitcase players and all-in-one players with their plastic platters. So when it, you know, things in motion tend to stay in motion principle. So when this starts spinning, it has a tendency to want to keep spinning. Now there are variables that play into that, like the spindle and things of that nature, but if the motor, when the motor has fluctuations in speed, as all electric motors do, it's not going to translate directly to the platter speed and therefore the pitch as easily. Mass inertia. All right, here's the warranty and instruction manual stuff. Hold on to that. We can flip this back over again. Now, it isn't super heavy because Crosley, in their partnership with their companies that they work with to help build these things have made a decision not to weight the product. Audio-Technica has chosen to weight there, so it'll feel heavier out of the box, and that is because they literally put a weight inside. Just like Beats headphones are famous for their metal weights, and it's not just like, oh, it's heavier, it's higher quality, but the thought process is, well, you add weights, then you know there's stability and you know the resonance properties change crosley discovered that there's really not much benefit to doing that so you know they left the weight out which i think is you know perfectly fine i haven't noticed a difference on the lp120 versus this based on the on the weight or lack thereof before we get to the piece de resistance which i'm going to put over there for right now i wanted to remind you not to throw away the styrofoam until you've got everything out of here so we have a few accessories sort of hiding here. My oversized pocket knife here. That's going to be an that's going to be a running gag now. <laughs> oversized pocket knife. This will be the power supply by the way. So, it does use the wall wart. So it is a DC power supply there. And over here we've got the head shell with the cartridge pre-aligned, we've got a probably a plastic cheapo 45 adapter and then a metal counterbalance right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those out in just a minute, but rather than force you to watch me saw through a bunch of tape and slowly extract things, I thought we would get on with things and focus on the main article. Once I get this bag cut open, and here we go. Oh, awesome. I love it. I love that moment. I love the reveal. I think it's so, so cool. Now, you heard me mention a while ago about this being a belt-driven turntable. The C200 is the, is the direct drive. And if you don't know, a direct drive, the motor is directly connected to the platter. And therefore, the motor, sometimes in the case of like a Technics, is the platter. It's literally one piece. In some cases, it's geared. In some cases, it's just, you know, directly correlated. But there's direct contact between that motor and the platter. And it gives you good torque. The record comes up to speed really quick. And it's required for DJ work. If you're not doing DJ work, there's not really a major benefit unless you need an extra, your record to spin up, you know, 20% faster than a regular record, which I've never thought to myself, dang, this record's just taking too long to spin up. <laughs> it never happens. So uh, the benefits, actually audiophile turntables opt for a belt mechanism because there's that rubber separating the motor from the platter. And the reason why that's important is this vibrates. Whether, whether, how quali high quality of a motor you have, there is noise, there is motor noise, and that will get transferred either more so with direct drive or less so with a belt to the platter, which is then picked up by the stylus and tone arm, which you can hear is platter rumble, motor rumble. It's not a huge, huge thing. Don't freak out about this stuff, okay, guys? Don't. And also, if you have a suitcase player or you have an all-in-one, 
and you can't afford to upgrade or you don't you know have the notion to do so I don't want you guys to feel bad because you know you can absolutely absolutely keep enjoying records um, so don't feel bad if this isn't an option for you right now I honestly didn't think it would be for me for a long time all right let's uh, look at this here this is a uh, plastic ABS plinth it, this my original C100 was gray so this uh, black unit it looks a little bit different I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on a couple things. So this is the Bluetooth enabled device. Therefore, you got buttons down here for speed, which it only does two speeds. Come on guys, let's do three speeds on this. Like the LP120s. I would love to be able to spin my 78s on here. And then a Bluetooth pairing button. I think in the original, this was one button each for 45 and 33. Um, so anyway, this says it by color, red and green. This is the pitch slider. So this increases or decreases the speed of the motor thereby increasing or decreasing the uh, pitch and I'll show you why that's important in a minute this is an improvement over the original one I can tell you already my original one the slider was a little bit bent it was still functional but I feel like this has been improved back here we have a uh, the counterbalance uh, we'll screw on right there that is plastic this is aluminum and this is the same sort of gimbal mechanism that the original had, which is, it worked fine. It did a good job. And the anti-skate controls well. This is a little place where you can store your extra styli. And while I've got it out, there's the motor spindle. Over here is where you put your 45 adapter when not in use. This um, is the punch out where some models uh, that come out of this factory have a Q light. That's where that would be. This one does not have it does have the voltage select there so you can switch between 220 or 110 down here we've got the start and stop button and the on and off switch which doubles as a cue light as you can see down there there's a little white area that's the uh, lens as it were for the light the cue light the original was an orange light I wish it was blue I'm not sure what this one will be well I'll have to see and uh, the dots down there 33 and 45 I'll show you why in a little bit now looking on the back We've got the sticker there. We've got the serial number. We have the power input is a 12 volt unit. We've got the RCA left and right output, the grounding terminal, and the phono in line switch. This is important because this has a built-in preamp. So if you are using a magnetic cartridge, and again, for those of you on a suitcase player or an all-in-one with a red tip ceramic cartridge, you don't need to worry about having a preamp because by its very nature, a ceramic cartridge outputs line level voltage by itself whereas a magnetic cartridge which is this technology outputs a lower voltage so it needs a, a built-in or not necessarily built in it needs a separate circuit to boost that to line level and that's what a preamp does some people like to use external preamps and if you want to do that you can switch it to phono and it'll output the uh, lower level signal to your your separate preamp in this case we're just going to use a built-in preamp have I ever noticed a major difference? No. It's a very subtle thing that you get when you uh, start talking about external preamps and stuff, at least at the level of speakers and things that I you know, have been listening on. And by the way, speaking of speakers, stay tuned. More news coming on that topic in the near future. And then back here, we've got the uh, clips for the, um, the lid. Looking underneath here, we have the feet are swivel. Feet that has a plastic foot with a dense rubber pad right there. And over here is an important thing as well. You will notice that there are three speed adjustments, which is interesting considering it is a two speed turntable and I can only see two actual pots there. There's nothing in that 78 hole. Uh, if this, again, coming out of that factory was one of the models or variants that had 78, you could adjust that speed there as well. So if you wanted to calibrate that pitch slider, so that, where is it, over here, so that, you know, zero and there is a detent marking right there if um, you wanted to calibrate this so zero was dead accurate you could fiddle with those pots under there to get it exactly perfect I would caution you about doing that I did that once and I, I caused more harm than good because those fine-tune adjustments require truly a jeweler's screwdriver and if you try using you know what you think is a small enough screwdriver it's it doesn't work Last thing underneath here I want to point out is these little indentations right here. These are for your fingers. 
So when you're grabbing it like this, there's a nice place for your fingers to go. And I think that's a good, good thing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, start assembling this. If you feel like this is overwhelming to assemble, don't be, it's really not. It's, I'll show you how to do it. So literally you just start by placing the platter right over the top like that. You go ahead and give it a little spin there. It doesn't hurt anything. We can make sure there's no platter wobble. That would be the platter, you know, moving back and forth. Seems pretty dang good. Sometimes the paint right here isn't applied completely evenly, so the lines will look like they're kind of going like this and give the illusion of platter wobble when there isn't. And this one looks like it's pretty dead on in terms of the actual platter stability. Also, you'll notice how long that spins when I just give it a little bit of a spin right there. It just keeps going and going and going. That means our spindle, our main bearing is, is well lubricated, well designed. And if you watch the recent video we did of a brand that shall remain nameless, at least in this video, of a similar looking turntable, which I guarantee you, I can't guarantee you, I highly suppose did not come out of the same factory. Um, you can already see the major leap in quality that we're experiencing with this investment and this level of product. Although I will say this, the price on that thing was ridiculous. It was more than this, I think. I think it was either equal to or more than this. And I can already tell you that this is far superior. Okay, so what you want to do is position this opening around that brass motor spindle. Just pull up on the ribbon. The ribbon is just there to help you position it. It's a one, one and done kind of thing. You can take the tape off. Then pull back on the ribbon and using your finger just position the belt around that pulley and you're good to go. And you can pull the ribbon away and toss it one time use only. I always say to make sure that you kind of move the platter back and forth a little bit and make sure that it's laying flat against the sub platter. As you can see, we're good. We are good to go. This belt will last you years and they're easily, you know, changeable, easily replaceable. They're inexpensive. It's kind of like a set it and forget it kind of a thing. Now that that's done, we can just place our platter mat on there. Easy as that. Now we need to focus on the tone arm. And again, if you haven't done this before, don't freak out. It's really not that hard. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, you can either use a stylus pressure gauge, which we've talked about before, or if you don't have that, this unit will actually allow you to set it without the need of that. So I'm gonna move this last bit of packing materials out of the way. And let's go ahead and start, I'm gonna clip this in by the way. Let's get a little closer. So this is the counterbalance. It's a heavy piece of metal with a little plastic dial that spins. And what you need to do is just place it back here and we will calibrate this in a minute so that the stylus of the cartridge, the needle, won't be pushing down too hard on the record. But for now, just put it on there. Also, while we're looking this close, I wanna point out a couple of things. So here we've got the little latch. When you're not using your tone arm, your turntable, just put it in there and then you have to put this little clip over there, it holds it tight. And this is the cueing lever. So this lowers, raises, and lowers the tone arm gently. So that's something to keep in mind. Next thing is the head shell and cartridge. Here is the head shell. This uses what's called a half inch mount. That's a standard half inch mount. It's great because unlike more beginner level units where you have to wire the cartridge every time, this one allows you just to plug and play. So you can go buy uh, extra head shells and mount them with different cartridges. Like in the case of the LP120, if you want to you know, use a 78 cartridge uh, stylus with a dedicated cartridge for that, you can have a head shell mounted up with that. And then when you want to swap them out, you just swap them out and then adjust the, the back. But for right now, all we need to do is insert it like that and then rotate this and it's ready to go. And it's already pre-aligned from the factory, which is great. So Crosley, if you are watching, these cheap 45 adapters, come on guys. These, co these must cost like a tenth of a cent to make. It is just cheap hollow plastic. For those of you that are not sure, it's, it's a, an adapter. So if you're playing a record with a large hole in the middle of it, here in the United States, our 45s oftentimes have a large hole in the center, so you need an adapter. But come on. On. Let's use let's use the aluminum ones. Let's put the you guys make some awesome, awesome even some like Beatles themed aluminum. I assume they're aluminum 
45 adapters that are solid and not hollow. Putting that in here would increase the perceived value immensely. By the way, that's where it lives back there in the corner. One thing that I love about this type of turntable is this little, you'll notice this little indent in the back. You're like, why is there an indent? So this guy lives back there. How do you get it out? I can't get it out. You know, it's flush with a plinth, so it's hard. No, it's not. You just push in the back and lift it out. I know, I'm easily amused, but that's, that is a good design, okay? So, okay, let's balance this, this counterbalance. Let's get this thing set and ready to play. If you hear a loud squeak or a chirp, it's because Yoshi the bird is now on my shoulder. Hope he doesn't start biting me. Um, started to get a little antsy over there. Sometimes he gets a little loud when we're filming. So keeping him quiet while we're rolling is, is tricky. So, all right, we're gonna balance the tone arm. This is probably the tricky-est thing you're gonna need to do, but it's not tricky, so it's simple. And I wanna show you how to do it. The first thing is make sure you take the stylus guard off because this thing needs to be properly, properly balanced. You open this clip up and then we're gonna move it out here and we're gonna do something called floating. Now I know there's been one guy out there lately that keeps saying, don't balance your tone arms this way, use a, use a stylus pressure gauge. Yes, that's a good idea, if, assuming your pressure gauge is accurate. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it this way and most people that are just getting started at this level probably don't have one yet. So this method is a good fail safe. By the way, put the rest in the down position. You can give it a little bit of help there to make sure it's down because we wanna make sure that this tone arm is floating in space. I think I've already got it. So basically what, it I, what I did is I moved the counterweight on the right there until it wasn't going down and it wasn't going up. It was somewhere in between. So it's zeroed out. That would be its float point, okay? Once you've achieved the float point, go ahead and lock that back there. You can put the uh, stylus guard on if you want. By the way, don't throw these away. When you're storing them or moving or selling them or you know whatever, even sometimes people use these when they're you know just not listening to their turntable. It doesn't hurt because it keeps that needle protected. And we're gonna look at that cartridge closer in a minute. So now that we've got the tone arm floated, we actually need to set the tracking force. Before we do that real quickly, this is an Audio-Technica AT95E, which is a great cartridge. Let me move it around to the front so you can see the Audio-Technica logo on there. This is a great, great, moving magnetic cartridge. This is an upgrade in and of itself. The original C100 had the baseline Audio Technica 3600L. So this is a step in the right direction in terms of increasing the quality of the cartridge. Although 3600 is a fine cartridge, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But this is, this is a little bit higher end. So that's, that's good, it's actually significantly higher end. The tracking force that they recommend for this is two grams. So now that we've got everything floated and balanced, we need to actually apply the correct pressure. I'm gonna focus on the right part there. Okay, so remember how I said that this plastic ring moves freely from the metal part in the back? So we need to hold the metal part in the back now that we have it where we want it and rotate this to zero, which is the top position that tells us that it's zeroed out. So now this counterbalance is is calibrated it, and now it's showing zero because that is a zero point there's zero grams of force being pressed down on that stylus but you can't play a record that way you have to have some weight to push down on that needle so we are going to rotate the back now and you can just, just hold the metal part because you'll notice that the plastic spins freely if you want it to so we're going to rotate this clockwise until we get to two grams which is right there so two grams of downforce this thing is completely set to go. Now you will say to yourself, and that's why a magnetic cartridge is better because it only puts two grams of force down where a suitcase player with a ceramic red tip cartridge puts five or six grams down. Yes and no. Those types of cartridges, a ceramic cartridge is designed to put five to six grams of weight down. It cannot operate at two grams like a magnetic one can. So there is a, there is a difference. It has a separate topic for a separate day. One more thing. We wanna make sure we set the anti-skate to the same value initially that this is set at. So two gram downforce means two gram on the anti-skate, or I should say two on the anti-skate because it's not measured in grams. Anti-skate basically, let me, let me show you what this thing does. So if we put a record on here and there was no anti-skate applied, and let's say the record was smooth, there was no grooves to hold the needle, that tone arm would pull towards the center. That's just the tendency of what it has 
a tendency to do. So the anti-skate pushes a little bit or makes creates resistance so that that tone arm doesn't want to pull to the middle by itself. Therefore, just like we neutralize the up and down before we set the right tone arm pressure, it neutralizes the left and right movement so that it's completely dictated, its position is completely dictated by where it's playing on the record, where that groove is. And why that's important is because without it, it can be pushing on one side of the groove harder than the other, which would make the volume of that channel, whether it be the left or right channel, louder than the other, wouldn't be completely balanced. So again, these are finite controls and things that you don't really need to concern yourself with a lower end record player, but once you get up to this mid range here, it's something that you have finite control over. Again, you set it and forget it, unless you're changing cartridges or uh, you know making a conscious you know change, you're not gonna adjust that every single day. That's a set it and forget it kind of a thing. Okay, I'm gonna get this cabled up, we're gonna get it plugged in, and let's test it out. We are ready to go. I see that is now a red light. I like that better, I think, than the orange. Which is funny, because if you were on the live yesterday, you discovered that orange is my favorite color. But um, that was a lot of fun. Thank you to everybody who joined on that. That was fun. I love giving away stuff. Um, so this does require speakers. I want to make that very, very clear. There's no built-in speakers. You need powered speakers or a stereo system with an aux input. And we're going to do a sound test, a direct feed, because you guys like that the best. We're going to do a direct feed sound test here in a minute. But first, I just kind of wanted to show you its basic operation. So I'm going to be using a record that is from a viewer. This is his wife who actually produced this record, which is really cool. I should say they produced it together. We're gonna to go ahead and put this record on right here. And we'll, we'll use it for the sound test too in a little bit here, but I just wanted to first show you the basic operation. So to turn the turntable on, you just rotate the top of this. Also that turns the strobe light on, but the platter doesn't start spinning until you press the start and stop switch. You may be noticing some funky business down here. I'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. And then to stop it, you press the stop button. Over here on the right, we can change the speeds even while it's in motion. I like how that's green and red, that's cool. So that is 45, it's faster, and then it slows down when we go back to 33. And we can also increase the speed by going up on the slider or down. Okay, now that's a very minute change that's not a you know somebody is like well, why don't you just put it if you want to play 78 just put it to 45 mode and then you know put the slider up it doesn't go up that fast it's not it doesn't have that quite quite that range this is for fine tuning and then this is the bluetooth pairing which we'll look at in a minute so to use a manual turntable like this now that this is completely balanced we don't need to you know bother with any of that stuff back there anymore we can remove the clip we can either use the cueing lever to raise the tone arm rotate it across to the surface of the record and then pull back and the record or the tone arm gently descends and plays the record or you can and when you when it's done it's just going to sit there and spin it's not going to that run out groove is a concentric circle it's just going to sit there and spin 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 it's not going to come home by itself automatically it doesn't do anything automatically this is completely manual complete control so you can have the manual control experience um, let me look at the alignment of the cartridge. Um, I was going to say, too, that if you don't want to use the cueing lever, then you can cue manually with this. Uh, this is called a uh, lift right here. You just gently grab this lift. I like to push back on it to get some leverage and just gently place that where you want it. I'm really shaky, so for me, I like the cueing lever. Um, it looks pretty pretty good it's canted to the right a little bit actually i'm going to show you that in a second that's kind of bizarre see how the right side the right side the ume is down a little bit i feel like that is not quite level and that should be flat so that's a bummer it's more pronounced here on the edge yeah i've had that happen before on a couple different turntables are you going to notice a huge difference in sound on that Probably not, depending on what speakers you're listening to, but still it shouldn't do that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the strobe markings. As you can tell, there's four rows of dots, and we only need two, 33 and 45. 33 being the small ones, 
than 45 being the large ones. But why is there four rows? This can be configured for both 220, 50 hertz, or 110, 60 hertz. And here in the United States, or 110, 60 hertz. So two of those dots are gonna be for us. Two of those dots are gonna be for other people. So let's go ahead and hit start. And it looks better to the eye than it does on camera, but let me readjust my angle, that'll help a little bit. Okay, as you can see, we've got two sets of dots that look like they're in the right neighborhood. Those are the bottom two. So those are gonna be for us. Of those, the smaller dot, the 33 RPM dot, is the one we're gonna focus on. That is the second from the bottom. As you can tell, it's marching a little bit to the left and playing some games with the autofocus. Okay, so I'm gonna move that pitch slider up. And as I do that, you'll notice that it stabilizes. So see that second row? You can kind of see three dots in focus there. See how they're pretty much staying centered? They're not moving to the left or right? We now know that this is accurate at 33 RPM. Now, if I switch the speed to 45, those small dots go blurry and the big ones on the very bottom come into focus a little bit. And again, using that pitch slider, I can make an adjustment back and forth until I find a static position. And now I know it's spinning at 45 RPM on the dot. Well, nearly, once I find that sweet spot. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, it is worth noting that this does not have a quartz lock like some turntables in this range do. But again, that's a sort of a nice to have. It's not a requirement. It just helps with the speed consistency. Once you have the uh, pitch slider in place, you can really do a lot of that control uh, by yourself. And honestly, you won't really ever need to once it's calibrated. So now we are ready for a sound test. Okay guys, so that is just the ambient sound in the room. We're gonna do a direct feed here in a minute. I've been listening to this thing now for probably about 30 minutes so far, a few different records. And um, I'm impressed. I think it sounds good. It's very clear. It's very neutral sounding. I am using an external preamp using the uh, Pluto 2 from um, people that make that. <laughs> U turn. There you go. Um, and so far, I'm, I'm very happy with it. It sounds good. I'm using a very nice set of speakers right now. So um, everything sounds really, really good. But what I want to do next is really test out this Bluetooth capability. So I'm going to scoot scooch back just a little bit and I'm going to play around with this pairing and see if I can figure it out. Okay, so to pair Bluetooth, I've got my Bluetooth speakers in pairing mode and I'm going to press and hold the pairing button here. It's going to flash between two different colors and if all goes according to plan, we're connected. Yeah! What happened? We were connected. Huh. Just had to turn the volume up again. That was weird. Okay, cool. And again, this is just ambient sound. We haven't done the direct feed yet. Sorry, it's a little kind of yellowish looking. I'm not using the uh, ring light today. Sounds really good. And it's in indistinguishable sound quality wise on some pretty nice speakers between Bluetooth and a direct feed, which is what we were, or not a direct feed, a direct feed for me, you know, cabled out of the device into the speakers. That's what we were hearing at the beginning. And then we switched to Bluetooth. Between those two, they sound the same. But you're only listening to this through a mono microphone. So you're not getting the, the true benefit, the stereo effect. And I want to give you that opportunity now. So let us do a direct feed sound test. How about that? I got an island in the Pacific and everything about it is terrific. I got the sun to tan me, palms to fan me. Yeah. Okay, and as promised i wanted to show you these as well so i do have one of these crates in fact this one we reviewed a few years ago right three four years ago now and i love it it's you know still functioning properly it's you know it's been through a lot already and it's just holding up like a champ so i decided to upgrade the other record holding devices as it were which were mostly plastic tubs and plastic crates 
So I thought I would get started by um, adding four more crates to the mix. As you can see, Crosley has multiple styles. This is sort of the original, I think. A dark finish. And then I'm really excited about these two Beatles editions in the back. We have the Apple on the right and Yellow Submarine on the left, which will go fantastic with my Yellow Submarine Crosley record player that we reviewed for Record Store Day. So how do you put one of these together? I'll show you how to put one together and then I'll just show you what they all look like finished. This is one of the most affordable and rewarding things you can do for your whole vinyl experience is investing in a real crate. When I first saw these, I'm like, come on, dude, just put them in a box, put them in a crate, put them on a shelf. I personally like the crate way of doing things versus the shelf because I like flipping through the records like I'm at a record shop. In fact, I have a little virtual record shop set up in the other room, which I'll show you guys down the road. We've done a couple shows in there, actually. But that's the archive, and I want to have a good experience, the best experience while doing that for not much money. And this is a really good investment. I got my first one as a Christmas present, and I was like, okay, well, I wouldn't have bought one myself, but since I got it as a gift, I'll try it out. And I have since fallen in love with the whole idea and realized that it's, it's very rewarding. Because, I mean, this fits the records perfectly. There's no wobble. The plastic tubs are kind of like they can introduce some... some some warpage which isn't good so i mean it's it's a wooden crate this is not a high-tech device this isn't a rocket science it's some wood in the right place at the right time to make sure that your records are protected and you know with the kind of money that records cost especially new ones that's an investment that truly is worth protecting so this is a way to do that so Typical for Crosley, everything is very well packed. Very, very well packed. Um, so we got the two side pieces right here. And they, you'll notice they're not assembled in any way. There's just the, drill, the drilled holes there. We've got the manual. We've got the hardware, which I think it's just one size of screw. Silica packet. And then we have the bottom piece and then the end cap. So these are the ones that are on the end. So essentially what we'll do is put this thing together like this so front and back panels and then the side panels which will go on each side so rather than make you watch me do that i'm just going to put them together and we'll take a look at the finished product so this will i wonder how long this will take me so okay it's about 315 right now we'll see how long it takes to put four of these together okay one more before i put it together i've got everything unpacked which took a hot minute it smells like wood shop in here it was really interesting. Uh, this stain on this particular set is a very dark, dark stain. This is the most pungent of the mix. And uh, I'm excited. This is it's so, it's a nice fresh restart. It's something you can really do to jazz up your record environment. So I'm really excited. Okay, now I've really got to put them together. Whew, I got to get out the good screwdriver. I wish I had a power screwdriver right about now, but I don't. So. Okay, it took almost an hour, and as you can see, they were just wood screws, different finishes depending on which one of these we were building, but the construction seems really good. I remember this from before. These uh, front and back trim pieces are framed in what appears to be solid wood, and then the edge pieces and the bottom pieces are plywood, which you can see right there. Again, everything seems well constructed. I did have a couple of screw holes that either were stripped or I stripped them by, you know, screwing on them too tightly. But, you know, a little drop of wood glue in there, you wouldn't have a problem. As it is, I don't think I'll have a problem because 20 screws make up each one of these. But I think this will be a great addition. So we'll definitely see these all loaded up in a future show. Okay guys, and that's gonna do it for today. If you want to snag these items, links will be in the description below. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. Are you interested in this turntable? If you're in a suitcase player or an all-in-one and you're ready for the next step, I think this might be a good step to make. Overall, I am very pleased with this unit. The only issue I have is that azimuth on the cartridge, which I'm thinking is a one-off based on my particular unit. That being said, I could not hear any issue from that, and I think that it could be mitigated by simply increasing the thickness of the platter. 
So I'll have to play around with that a little bit. And plus, this is a first look. I'm still kind of, you know, working my way around this unit. And I'm going to spend some more time this week listening to it. And if you want another review of a really cool product that we've hinted at a couple of times, you want to stay tuned for our show coming up this Wednesday. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you next time.